Welcome to another edition of Dad's Divorce Live. I'm Matt Allen, editor of dadsdivorce.com. In 2010, the U.S. Department of Justice reported an average of 200,000 cases of parental kidnapping each year. Now, today's guest is Maureen DeBaugh, who is, who is a Virginia Supreme Court family mediator specializing in cross-border child custody disputes, who has been providing expert testimony on the issue of parental kidnapping since 1997. Now, her own three-year-old daughter was abducted from the United States and taken to the Middle East by her ex-husband, and Maureen had no communication with her daughter for 17 years until they were reunited in 2010, so she also has a personal connection to this issue. And now she has just released a book called Parental Kidnapping in America in Historical and Cultural Analysis that is available at all major retailers. So, Maureen, thank you very much for taking time to talk with me today. Thank you for inviting me. And now, first off, I noticed a chapter in your book is called Parental Abduction, a Timeless Tradition. So can you provide historical context to this issue and how long parental kidnapping has been a part of our society? We see, in my research for this book, uh, I found reference to parental kidnapping, uh, and it, the oldest was an ancient Hindu text, which was over 3,000 years ago. Wow. The first laws in America uh, during, during pre-colonial time, I even, I believe it was, and, and colonial, dealt with parental kidnapping. Uh, so as a new nation, the United States immediately began addressing those issues when large numbers of children were being abducted by parents, usually associated with religious movements and religious immigration movements. Now, you specialized in cross-border child custody disputes, as I mentioned. You've provided expert testimony on this issue uh, since 97, so over the last 15 years or so. Uh, and what changes, if any, have you noticed in how these cases are handled now compared to 15 years ago? I don't know that, the ch that they're being handled any different. Uh, certainly, the social... Um, view of child custody uh, and the, the, the social evolution uh, is, is of every culture, you know, doesn't reflect in their law. Um, as a result of that, our laws are antiquated, pretty barbaric. Um, so in the last 15 years, I've seen this abuse apologetics uh, dynamic increase uh, with laws not keeping up with it, and we have demonized the male gender, reducing men basically to, to sperm banks and child support checks. Uh, and it's created uh, a very negative uh, dynamic culturally uh, across the board. Uh, and policies continue today and laws uh, continue today to be made on these, these I call them flat earth theory assumptions. Uh, and I've seen these argued, I've seen them argued this year at state department level meetings uh, where it was offered that it is impossible for a female to commit an act of violence against a man unless she's defending herself. Therefore, we should, it was recommended that women uh, not be held accountable for uh, any acts of violence that they do. Uh, in regard to criminal kidnapping, it was suggested that the Hague be amended so that only men who abduct uh, uh, their children uh, should, should have petitions brought against them. So I'm seeing these types of suggestions as a result of, of this, um, this abuse apologetics dynamic. And again, it's hurting all families. It's hurting, you know, moms and dads and, and the kids. Well, before I, uh, or we get deeper into those uh, myths about parental kidnapping, I want to uh, ask you to sort of clarify that abusive apologetics. What do you exactly mean by, by that phrase? Abuse apologetics is a, is a dynamic that we are currently in. Uh, we are in the middle of, of a gender, I call it a war, a, an outright war, in which by virtue of an individual's gender, there are assumptions made regarding their parental abilities, their parental skills. And those assumptions go uh, in favor of females. Uh, 
And when females murder their children or when females act in a way that we don't expect them to behave, we apologize. For example, you know, we can turn on the news just about any day and see where moms kill their children. What we see is, is well, you know, maybe it's, this, it's an Anthony case, you know, where they walk. Or, you know, they make excuses, they apologize. There's a lot of apologies made for women who do these horrific acts. If a, if a father does this, um, the media treats it much differently, and so do the courts. My book talks about uh, the jail time and the sentences given to fathers who kill a child versus mothers who kill a child, and there's a huge difference. So abuse apologetics goes to this dynamic that we're seeing today where uh, because of this gender war, uh, and this assignment of, of um, characteristics to each gender that, that may or may not be true. We're acting upon this and we're apologizing for the poor behavior of women and we're not holding them accountable. We're not holding them accountable when they stab their husbands, when they shoot them, when they kill their children. We just make excuses. Uh, so this is what I'm talking about with abuse apologetics. We're apologizing for abusive behavior by females and we're dismissing it. Well, as we mentioned earlier, uh, you brought up some of those uh, myths about parental kidnapping, and, and your book seeks to clarify these misconceptions. So what are some of the larger myths surrounding this issue? Uh, there, was, there was some excellent research done in the 90s um, that identified certain characteristics that existed in abducting families, and I wish there was more done. Uh, the way that and I'm going to answer your question, but I have to lay a foundation for it first. The way that the research was done was that questionnaires were given to left-behind parents uh, whose children have been abducted. One of the questions, and I'm paraphrasing, but essentially was, why do you think your child was abducted? And the vast majority responded saying they believed that it was uh, a form of revenge and control. My research doesn't show that. I've been involved in over 1,500 abducting families. I've gone abroad. I've brought back children. I've worked with abductors. I've worked with left-behind parents. And I, work, I still continue working with adult children who are abducted. So I had a bit of an advantage over the past uh, 18 years, I guess, working with these families in, in that I had access to a lot of information that wasn't in print. So there's a lack of understanding. There's a lack of really, really good resources that will work with families that are having problems. Um, the courts and lawyers just rip them apart further. Uh, so this is what's going into parental kidnapping. Parents take their kids because they don't have another resource. Mm -hmm. They can litigate, which is really just tearing each other to pieces. And I think this is why I, I enjoy what I do as, as a cross-border mediator, uh, working with them so they can create solutions that help them because they are in a unique situation. Well, Maureen, I want to thank you very much for joining me today. You've certainly hit on a lot of points that will resonate with our audience. And I also want to wish you continued success uh, with your book. Thank you for having me. That was Maureen Dubois, a Virginia Supreme Court family mediator and also the author of the new book, Parental Kidnapping in America in Historical and Cultural Analysis. That will do it for this edition of Dad's Divorce Live. I'm Matt Allen, editor of dadsdivorce.com.